to speak to you for a while this morning on the, the warfare of the saint. Paul said that, called it the good warfare, the good fight. I trust that you have discovered by this time that, that there is a war on and that there are, that there are difficulties and there are issues and and that uh, the fight is on, as we sing in our hymn of some time, our great hymn, O Christian Soldiers. I think perhaps one of the uh, great difficulties of, uh, of modern religion, and we're all, none of us are immune to, to seduction at this point, is to be that of becoming unaware of the conflict and just making Amen. peace Amen. with the world, the flesh and the devil, and, and settling down to, to peaceful coexistence. But of course, that is not the will of God. Uh, those in that uh, that persuasion cannot please God, because uh, Jesus said, "My kingdom is not of this world," and it is opposite to the world. And we must become a, must be aware of that and take up the cross and take up the sword and take up the the, the implements of warfare and go for it, and conquer again to conquer. Either, as we have observed before, either the world will conquer you and, or you will conquer the world insofar as your relationship to it is concerned. There's no compromise here. It's a battle to the death. Amen. And our eternal salvation, our relationship to, to God, to the Son, is contingent upon our faithfulness at this point. Uh, Jesus said, Be thou faithful unto death. Mm -hmm. And I will give unto thee a crown of life. So that is our assignment. And we praise God that there is a grace abundant and sufficient for us to carry out that assignment. My grace, he said, is sufficient for thee. Mm -hmm. Now I want to call your attention first to Paul's statement here in 1 Corinthians 6, 12 to the young preacher Timothy. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession among many witnesses. You know, I, I take heart in that uh, remark there to Timothy. Uh, whereunto thou art also called. He was called unto eternal life. You know, uh, we have been called to obtain an inheritance in the Son. Uh, and uh, that's, that's uh, grounds for good courage because uh, uh, they whom he, whom he foreknew, then he also called and whom he called him himself all justified. So the, the, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. We, we don't want to be robbed of this. If you have uh, answered the gospel call, all men are, of course, are called. Uh, uh, God would have all men to be saved, but as you... Uh, hear the voice of God speaking to you through the uh, word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, and respond to that, then you're, you're, the, you're among the called, the, the called, according to his purpose. And there are many wonderful promises there uh, in, that, uh, that in, in, in the word of God concerning our, God's calling and election. So we don't want to we don't want to be talked out of that full assurance of faith that is ours Amen. by reason of the fact that we have been given to believe upon the Son. Amen. You know what he said, not only you, 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 you're given to believe, but to suffer for his for his sake. Now my basic text, and I will, of course we won't get through this great assignment, here is in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses ten to 19, that's, that's a big order of goods there for a short uh, uh, message uh, in, in the morning service. But I do want to, to look into that. It's, it's Paul's uh, uh, petition there, or, uh, admonition or exhortation to the church following at the close of his great uh, uh, letter to the, to the church at Ephesus. And he said, uh, they call there, but I want to take a look at verses 10 to 11 there. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. That's the first uh, exhortation. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You know, we, it doesn't say be strong in your creed or be strong in this or that, but uh, our, our relationship is to, to God. We, 
Uh, we're persuaded, uh, if you know God, see, I think it all comes out of this heading, uh, to, to know him, whom to know his life, and to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, we're persuaded with Paul uh, that God, uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, is able to keep that which we've committed to him against that day. Amen. We're, we're, be, be, and uh, Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So uh, we want to, uh, it's said that uh, there on one occasion that Jonathan uh, strengthened David's hand in the Lord. So it's uh, that, that's our job in, in, the, in the assembly is to strengthen one another's <coughs> hand and faith in God and faith Amen. in the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ and uh, cement our relationship to the Lord because we're to be strong in the Lord, not in the flesh, <laughs> not in ourselves, but strong in the Lord and the power of His might. You know, all things are possible with God. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. We, we need to, to rely upon that. We've got, the, it's a great uh, assignment to take uh, an unregenerated man or woman, boy or girl, and bring them from, from, uh, the, from nature to glory by way of grace. Well, God can do that. And we, we have confidence in, in, in the Lord touching the brethren in this respect. So we are to be strong in the Lord uh, and, and the power of his might there and that the, that tenth verse uh, it said, uh, "Put on the whole armor of God." <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God, uh, because uh, now he, he goes ahead and following there in the <coughs> verses to outline some of that armor. But this is sort of the preamble, I guess you'd say, to the uh, to the representation he makes there. Put on the put on the whole armor of God. I, I think we. We, we fall short there sometimes. People uh, are willing to, to, to go part of the way with the Lord, but uh, uh, taking unto themselves the, the, the entire provisions that God has made for our keeping, our salvation, and our keeping from the evil one, that's another thing. But uh, short of that, we do not have the assurances mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to be kept un unto the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. Take... Uh, Think it to yourself that, uh, and that make not make not provisions for for the flesh to fulfill the lust. Of. He tells you why. Uh, the next verse: Therefore we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now that's the that's the spiritual arena in which we, we, uh, we, uh, we find ourselves in Christ. Uh, Paul, uh, over at, earlier there in the Ephesian letter, he speaks about uh, the, the, spiritual, the spiritual host of wickedness in high places that, uh, that govern this world. They, they're, they're, they seem to be, they're in immediate charge. Uh, the, although the devil has been spoiled, yet uh, we, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against these, this hierarchy of, of demoniac of spirits that, mm -hmm. that are contending uh, in the arena of, of, of the world. And they have a, they, they, well, in fact, the, the devil is called the god of this world. And he is in immediate charge down here. Uh, and so we, that's, that's, the, that's our, they are our opponents. We're not... Uh, they, they assume flesh and blood, they're incarnated sometimes, and well, usually are in people. But back of that, the opposition to the right ways of God is this spiritual hierarchy in the high places, or King James says the heavenly places, uh, that uh, with whom we have to do. And we have to do battle with them, and that requires, of course, supernatural wisdom and supernatural power uh, to, to cope, to cope with the situation with which we're which with which we're confronted. Therefore he said, Take unto you the whole armor of God. He repeats that in the other preceding verse, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and that's now. May be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, that is, in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Amen. That's quite a strict statement there. Uh, I want to I like to just uh 
take these words, these, these phrases of, of inspiration. They were, they were given for inspiration of God. Uh, and, and just sort of enjoy them, sort of taste them and, and retaste them in my spiritual palate, so to speak. So we're, we're, we're to put on the whole armor of God and make not provisions for, for, the, for, the, for the flesh to fulfill the lust, to fulfill the lust thereof. And then take unto you the whole armor. Uh, be panoplied with uh, all of the provisions that God has provided for us uh, in this uh, good warfare of faith. Now, it's, and by doing that, we can we can be more than conquerors. We can be more than conquerors through Him, through Him that loved us. Now, I want us to notice here another section of this um, this great sixth chapter of Ephesians, uh, verses fourteen to fifteen. We've got here the we've got here the girdle and the breastplate and the shoes. He says, having your loins girt about with truth. Now that uh, that goes back, of course, to the to the armor back in the days of Old Testament warfare, in which they they uh, had their their armor on, and they they, they had a girdle around about their they girded it on. Uh, and he makes a transition, makes a spiritual application here. Your your loins uh, are, are are your life. We just say your whole way of thinking, your whole life is girded about or girded or encircled by 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 truth. I, I I can't emphasize that too much. You know, Jesus said, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." Amen. Mm -hmm. See, the devil operates by by the lie. He's a liar and the father of it. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, Jesus operates and wields his power by the truth. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, we're, to, we're just simply to be encircled by the truth. We are, we're, our minds, uh, we're talking about the truth of God as, re, as contained and set forth in the Word of in the Bible, the Word of God. Uh, we're to, we're to have, have our minds so saturated with the truth of God <coughs> that when something opposing it presents itself that our spirits will immediately recognize and recall against it. Now, if, you, if, you haven't, if you haven't attained to that level of spirituality, then you're in jeopardy. Because uh, I say we're living in the, in, in the domain of the big lie. Uh, and I, I would, you could get carried away here with a dissertation about the immorality of the time, but uh, just a passing reference here that... Uh, Seems like not since uh, the days of the wicked Roman Empire, or the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, have we had a civilization that's, that's increasingly so permeated with corruption and decay and immorality as our day is, and is mm -hmm. becoming respectableized. So you have to be insulated against that. You have to have your Amen. loins girt about with the truth, Amen. the truth of God, or else you'll be your 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 thinking will be modified. By, by, your, by the corrupt environment from which we live. And that's the first step downward, of course, is a modification of the way you think, uh, thinking, and the way you think. Now, he says that next thing, next provision he lays out is in, in, having on the breastplate of righteousness. The breast, now there, there's two, uh, two possible uh, meanings there. I didn't look up the commentators to see. I thought I might review it about as good as there is. Anyway, uh, there there are two possible applications there. Uh, the first one I take it to, it to have the breastplate of righteousness. That it goes back, of course, to the high priest's breastplate back there, you know, in the, in the temple. But I, I take that to be the imputed righteousness. I, it, it also has another. I think it, it's, it's susceptible to another meaning too. But I want us to notice here first the we are made the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Uh, this 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 has to do with justification. We're justified in Jesus Christ. Uh, we're justified from all things from which we could not be justified by the law of Moses. Amen. Uh, we're 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 de we're declared to be the righteousness of God in the Son. So this. Uh, a, a lively sense of your acceptance in the beloved. See, Christ did all the meritorious work. Christ kept the law. 
It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy hath he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the law has been nailed to the, the law as a means of acceptance with God. The law, the obedience to which was a means of acceptance with God has been done away. That's passe. That is no longer operative. We do not keep the law to be accepted with God. Then if we did, of course, we would merit our salvation and Christ would have died in vain. But we're justified freely by His grace, by God's grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we are to, we to have a, that breastplate of righteousness, a lovely, a lively, a lively awareness uh, of your justification. I tell you, brother, that gives boldness before the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. If you don't have that, the devil will drive you away. Cause, uh, well, uh, Paul, you know, Paul had Paul had the right view of it. He said that I know that within me, that is within my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Amen. Amen. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which I will, I find not. But then he went ahead and said, And I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord, that with my mind, that with my flesh I live to serve the Lord's sin, but with my mind I serve the Lord Christ. And he's accepted. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, mm. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, unless you get hold of that, now we're not, we're not giving you a green light, as we've said before, for sin. You, you don't... Amen. God forbid is the answer to that. We're just being realistic, but that's how it is in Christ, that uh, the, the, having on the breastplate of righteousness, that of the imputed righteousness, then also, of course, there is involved that matter of personal righteousness, which we do to, to measure, at least, by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we do acquire. If we live after the flesh, uh, consistently, of course, and persistently, we shall die. But if ye through the Spirit will mortify or put to death the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So we were not dispraising the, the obligation or not uh, and neglecting the obligation here to, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and put on righteousness. But uh, all the while we were fully and freely accepted by our uh, vicarious justification. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, otherwise there, wouldn't, there wouldn't be a chance, as we've said before. There wouldn't be a chance for any of us because... That, that's how it, that works in, in the kingdom of God. And he said there in verse 15, your, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I, what could be said about that? The, the, you know, the, Paul said there that the, in, at the, the household of Cornelius that uh, God uh, was sent, came preaching, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. That was a message he started out with there in, in, in Cornelius' household. That uh, Jesus Christ, God came preaching peace by Jesus Christ because he, he's the one that made peace by the blood of his cross. Mm -hmm. So the, we have the, this, the, the, you know, where do we, pre your, your feet shod with the preparation. Of, maybe I think perhaps uh, your feet shod with the preparation, that, uh, that in, envisions you're going and, and proclaiming the message. So we, as you go everywhere preaching the word, uh, you, 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 you've got the, uh, your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You've got, you've got good news. You, Amen. you haven't got a Sanhedrin law to proclaim, but you've got a gospel of salvation that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto, him, unto them, and he has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. So that's uh, having your feet shod with that. Be sure you know the gospel. Don't Amen. go out preaching the law. Go out preaching the gospel. You have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's a blessed, a blessed preparation there. Uh, now that, that, uh, he goes ahead to enumerate here then in verse 16. And uh, this certainly is fundamental. Above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. The shield of faith. You know, they uh, all in, envisions the, 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 the temptations and the accusations of the, of the evil one, the devil, against the, God's people. 
there's a fiery dart comes sailing through the air and aimed at your vitals. And you've got this shield of faith up, and, and that just gets that acquainted. He's usually here and uh, putting it out, it stops. It deflects or stops that fiery dart because, as I say, we're justified. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Praise Amen. God, it is Amen. God that justifies. Throw that is the devil the next time he brings up some of your delinquencies. If you assume as you've repented of them and turned from them. Uh, but uh, the, the shield of faith will quench all the fiery darts. It will deflect him or stop him. Uh, that the devil will hurl at you. And don't think he will not he will not accost you because he is the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing in that boy in which he delights than to point out some of your uh, deficiencies, uh, spiritual deficiencies, trying to drive you from the throne of God and the throne of grace. But you just throw up the shield of faith and, and say that uh, Christ bore that sin for me, that my, who is on, who is on self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we must learn to do that Amen. if we're going to walk with God. Now, that's just that simple. You've got to be able to use that shield of faith or else he'll drive you out in the presence. And then the farther away from God he gets you, of course, the more you are in the, under his captivating power. So I, I want to commend to you, above all, <laughs> Paul said, above all, the most important element in this armor is the shield of faith that wards off these fiery dice and protects you from the onslaughts, from the onslaughts of the enemy. And the helmet of salvation, <laughs> the helmet of salvation, well, I'll tell you, it's uh, it's good to know, as I've said, this kind of a repetition, you're overlapping here, uh, but it's uh, that protects the head, the helmet, you know, the salvation. And, and it's good to know that you're saved. I, I, a lot of folk uh, don't have that knowledge. The knowledge of Christ, uh, John the Baptist was to go before Christ to prepare the way of, uh, for him and to give the knowledge of salvation to give the knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. That's the second chapter of Luke. So you, 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 you must have, if you're going to be confident, if you're going to have power with God, you've got to, to know that you are accepted. Amen. You can't offer it on a hope so or on a trying so basis. We're accepted, brethren, by courage. As I've said, as Paul said, it's not by works, it's not by merit, it's not by works of righteousness. Where we're vicariously accepted in Jesus Christ. And so you, you take that helmet of salvation, knowing that, that you are saved, uh, and then, then in that you have confidence. You know that all the promises in Him are yea and amen to the glory of God. Uh, and in that knowledge you can uh, go forth valiantly to do battle for the King of Kings, the King of Kings and the Lord, the Lord of Lords. So then he said, uh, and take the sword of the Spirit. <laughs> uh, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Well, uh, that's what Jesus used, you recall, in, in the wilderness temptation. Every assault that the devil made upon him, he came right back out of the Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. And he, he used the, the, the Word. That's kind of hard on the people who write off the Old Testament. Uh, Jesus used it all together in his conflict with the, with the, with the devil. Uh, so the, 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 it's, it's living or quick, the King James says quick, or living, living and powerful and sharp with any two-edged sword. A person either dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. The, it's remarkable what, what the sword of the spirit will do Amen. in your own conflict with the devil. Amen. And when, when you're wrestling with, with temptation and seduction, you're just, uh, if you, of course, you've got to know the Word of God. You, a lot of times you won't have time to run and get the concordance out to look up the passage. And what <coughs> but if thy word have I hid in my heart, David said, that I have not sinned against thee. Amen. So if you, you, if you, you've got to possess the sword, in other words, before you can use it. But take the sword of the Spirit. Uh, and uh, that, uh, you know, the, Peter says, you resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's no implement for resistance more effective than that of the sword of the Spirit. 
to say that uh, it seems from what we know of him, the devil, that he has a pretty fair working knowledge of scripture himself. You know, he cited some diseases there in the, in the wilderness temptation, and he has a pretty good grasp of scripture. So all you, uh, as far as we know at least he does, it seems to indicate he does, so you just hold it over his head. <laughs> he probably knows more scripture than a lot of church people do. But you, you, just, you just cite, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. And, uh, for example, now, I, I know there are people that have been uh, caught in this snare of the devil. They started out with the Lord and they met well and, and the Lord accepted that good intention and pure heart. But they were overcome by some fault or some sin. Uh, and they didn't know the truth. You know, you should know the truth and the truth should make you free. So they, they just departed from the Lord. Uh, and of course, that delighted the devil. They, did, they, didn't, uh, they didn't know that uh, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he's a propitiation for our sins. And not only for our, not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So unless you know that, you see, uh, the devil can, can drive you away uh, and, and keep you away from, uh, from, from the presence of God. So you've got to be able to, uh, to know what, what the Word of God says uh, and be able to use the sword. Uh, just, Jesus, he said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins Amen. and to cleanse us from all unright. You know, Jesus gave a, uh, we wouldn't call it a parable, but he... He said there that the, that the disciples asked him, how often shall my brother forgive me? And so he said, so Peter said, seven times seven? He said, very last say not seven times, but seventy times seven. And he said that uh, if, if uh, seven times in a day you, you, your brother trespasses against him, turn again and, and say, I repent, forgive him. Well, that's a picture of, he was teaching, that's how God is. Mm -hmm. That uh, gen now that that's, that's not a that's not a green light or less license for sin. We say God forbid, Father say, but it is a, an amnesty provision there. We do Amen. sin, we do fall short, but we want to be able to come back to God. Bless God for that. It's the grace of God, and that's why Jesus Christ shed His blood. Uh, he uh, He's ministering His uh, His blood. Uh, uh, he's a minister of the true tabernacle, which God fits and not man uh, and that uh, that that blood there is being ministered now uh, for the forgiveness of sin that's why uh, that's that's what necessitates the present mediation of Jesus at the right hand of God for the church is because it, it hasn't yet attained it, it still has sin and he administers his blood the efficacy of his blood there before the throne uh, and, and I praise God for that because it that leaves us without excuse for alienation from God, you see. Uh, that is repentance granted. If, if there's not repentance, of course, then you have no part in a lot in this. Uh, you, there has to be that sorrow for sin uh, with a determination to turn from it. And that's what's involved in repentance. If that granted, that, that presence, then we have an advocate with, with the Father uh, and we, we glory and praise His name for it. Well, finally here he says... Uh, Praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. <laughs> you know, Jesus said to pray without ceasing. Uh, some folks say, well, you can't do that. Well, that's what he said anyway. <laughs> you take that up with him. Uh, he said, pray without ceasing. Paul said, praying always with all prayer and supplication. I understand you can't be down on your knees all the time praying, but that, that's, that is that's, it's good to do that. Nothing. I, I do that myself in my private prayer, but uh, that that's not uh, incumbent. That's not essential, indispensable. That position's not. But we can be uh, in, in an attitude of prayer. We can, well, see, what several things you do, do it heartily as in the Lord, not as in the men. So praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. I, that's that's really a blessed privilege. See that. Uh, that uh, helps to maintain your, your God consciousness. That, that helps mm -hmm. to maintain your, your, your sense of relationship, to living relationship to God. We, we do the communion of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so we, we're to pray always with all prayer, <coughs> supplication in the Spirit, and, and watching, I like that, watching thereunto 
with all perseverance for all saints. That is, watching for the for the answer. That's what I that's what I take that means. Amen. Yeah, that, that you we, we, when I when I ask God for something, I, I expect an answer uh, if it's in accord with His will. But we have to we have to make that provision there. Uh, Jesus did, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. But uh, as we pray in the will of God, uh, we know that whatsoever things we ask, we receive of Him, because we do always those things that are well pleased. Jesus said that. Whatsoever things I ask, I receive, because I do always those things that are well pleasing in His sight. And then watching thereunto, be, be expectant. Be expectant in your prayer life. Uh, and I say, subject to God's will. And be willing to submit that. If some, the answer is no. Sometimes it was with Jesus. The answer to Jesus' three prayers in the Garden of Gethsemane was no. Amen. Mm -hmm. He besought him three times to let this cup pass, but the answer was no. He couldn't do that. And Jesus submitted to that. But uh, the, the answer is no, always no. If we ask in accordance with his will, then we know that he heareth us. And we know that if he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, bless God, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. Then Paul goes ahead there in that concluding section there, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching the end too with all perseverance for all saints and for me, he said, for me, that he might carry on his minister, ministry, uh, and the charge which he had received uh, of the Lord uh, to testify of the, of the grace of God. So uh, that, that's a, a great uh, bit of instruction there the apostle has for the church uh, that uh, put on the whole armor of God and taking the prayer and the word of God and, and carrying out our devotion to the Lord and as we do that we have the assurance of God that we shall we shall overcome to the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen.